Listen to AM 560 The Answer online at 560theanswer.com on the AM 560 mobile app, on your Alexa powered smart speaker, and on TuneIn, iHeart, and on Odyssey. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios, this is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson. Only the biggest stories, only the biggest guests, and only the biggest opinions. This is AM 560 The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan. Anyway, I'm still trying to promote uh, downstate tourism here. That's okay. uh, TPC uh, Deer Run, the John Deere Classic this weekend. Yes. Uh, I'm from Barry Cronin saying Caitlin Clark, the great uh, Iowa basketball player. Love her. Uh, play with Zach Johnson, who's from Iowa right. and won uh, the ma- major do? winner. How she hit the little white ball. Uh, I asked him. He hasn't responded yet, but uh, I said, they said biggest crowd ever. Kids were everywhere. She's an incredible person. Oh. Zach Johnson must have slayed it. Have you been saying that? No, no, Zach, it's fine. Well, that's good. That's good. great. All right, so there you go. Get down to the Quad Cities or go over to the Quad Cities if you uh, are so inclined and you're a fan of the game of golf, which I am not, but I can't stop playing uh, well, anyway. Well, how did you play yesterday? Uh, I didn't play yesterday. Oh, well, then you did well. <laughs> yeah, better. Better than when I played the day before. Yeah, feel better about my game than when I actually play it. Um, all right, so uh, some people don't want the Trump-Biden matchup. I've got a, a more interesting matchup for you, perhaps more fitting for our times. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was sparked by this piece that uh, our friend Chadwick Moore wrote uh, on uh, the occasion of our nation's birthday. How about Joe Exotic versus Carol Baskin? Oh, oh, oh. You know, I mean, the no labels people are looking for a candidate. Yeah, that's true. Uh, maybe Joe Exotic can pull a Eugene B. Dubs. Maybe a Donald Trump. We'll see and run a presidential campaign from prison. From prison. Yeah. That was the topic of their conversation. I'm not kidding. I wish I was. Chadwick Moore, editor in chief at Outspoken, contributing editor, Spectator World. He is the Tucker Carlson biographer. The um, book Tucker, the biography of Tucker Carlson, available July 18th. So. Um, you want to pr- pick that up at all the places where you pick up books. Chadwick, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Hey, good morning. Uh, so, uh, what sparked your interest in Joe Exotic? I, I thought we had, uh, turned that cultural page, uh, uh, a couple of seasons ago. <laughs> well, aside from being the greatest living gay icon, I would say, uh, <laughs> really, <laughs> <laughs> well, he, uh, you know, he announced he's running for president from from federal prison, uh-huh. and uh, he initially was running as he, he ran for uh, governor of Oklahoma in 2018 in the primary as a libertarian, but didn't get many votes. And uh, he was announced he announced that he was running as a libertarian, but the libertarian party kicked him out. So uh, now he's running as a Democrat, and I uh, wanted to catch up with him and just see what is political stances were and what what drove him to run so i you know was talking to him from prison and and got the skinny on that all right so, right, so what, why yeah what are his what are his views why is he a democrat now what, how is he aligned with the the bidens of the world well in his words he has the uh, values of all three parties of libertarian democrat and republican he said that he you know wants you to be able to carry guns and have an abortion and grow your own weed He's all for uh, federalizing legalized weed. Uh, he wants to run as a Democrat because he wants to debate Joe Biden, uh, which I think everyone would like to see. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's going to happen or not. Um, and, uh, you know, his biggest issue is prison reform. He says that since he's been locked up, uh, he's had a total change of heart about zookeeping. And if he'd you know, known what he does now 20 years ago, he never would have had a zoo, believing that he doesn't think any animal belongs in a cage. Uh, and... Um, uh, and also the, the you know the treatment of inmates that he says he's received, uh, such as his top issues, prison reform. Well, the feline population well, says to Joe Exotic, oh, now you tell me you don't want to keep us caged up. <laughs> well, now yeah, he's thanks caged. A lot. No, he's caged, so he knows what it's like, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He said, you know, whether it's a tiger or a gerbil, he said he doesn't think any animal belongs in captivity. Oh, boy. I don't I don't really want to go any further in the discussion of Joe Exotic and gerbils, but uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. OK. And uh, and what does he say since I did watch the Joe Exotic? I loved it. Season. It was just so out of this world um, with the, the Carol Baskin is uh, is he still 
uh, is his fatwa against Carol Baskin still operable? And is he still, you know, wanting her to be brought to justice in some way? Yeah, you know, he still thinks that she murdered her husband. Uh, you know, his team. Is that I still a to, crime? Like, yeah. <laughs> he he um he he has a team. He has a press secretary who I spoke to who runs the Primate Sanctuary in Tennessee. He's a former megachurch pastor. And, uh, you know, they think that, uh, of course, of course, <laughs> apparently she the is. exotics world is very, in, is very incestuous. Now, <laughs> and uh, so, um, you know, Joe, they all think that, that it was a stitch up that Joe, there was a, a, um, a, a bill passed called the um, Big Cat Safety Act uh, that a bunch of animal rights groups were, were pushing for. And they, and they believe that Joe was in the way of that. So he was targeted uh, as a way to get that bill passed. Uh, and, um, you know, there, there, there actually was some evidence in a, in a, a TMZ interview a couple of years ago that the alleged hitman that Joe hired uh, kind of uh, suggested that he perjured himself and that he, you know, wasn't actually hired to murder Carol Baskin and that um, he simply just hated Joe Exotic and wanted to punish him. Uh, so so they're, they're still trying to get appeals. They think that they have a case. I don't know if it's actually going to happen, uh, but uh, they're, they're fighting both. Uh, a legal battle and uh, to be the next president of the United States. Uh huh. All right. Well, if we could uh, talk about slightly more serious presidential oh. politics. Wait, yeah. What? <laughs> cocaine in the White House? Well, we'll get to we'll get to coke in the White House and what Chadwick Moore might know about that, um, and also what the odds are. Let's we'll see if the odds. We'll check in with the odds maker. See if they've changed at all. Uh, place your bets. But uh, the Ron DeSantis campaign. Um, Ron DeSantis campaign is in deep trouble. That's uh, headlines this week, and it's coming from inside the Ron DeSantis campaign. Well, at least the Super PAC, uh, the uh, Never Back Down Super PAC run by Ken Cuccinelli. Um, wh- wh- what is your assessment of the DeSantis campaign and why it seems to uh, be sort of stuck in the mud and, and has been since he announced? He really hasn't moved at all. I, it's, I mean, I, I'm a little surprised by that, to be honest. Um, I mean, I guess my assessment, he released this bizarre ad a few days ago that was, you know, it wasn't really against like grooming or, or gender ideology. It was really kind of targeting Trump for basically saying, I don't care if you're gay. And uh, I think for a lot of people it revealed for DeSantis as being, well, at least his campaign being run very disingenuously and pandering. Um, you know, maybe people are seeing him more as, as just doing anything he can for votes compared to Trump, who's just so obscenely honest in himself. That's part of his appeal. But you can't ever see Trump really doing or saying anything that he doesn't agree with. He's sort of in charge of that. And it seems like, I don't know, it seems like a lot of people are maybe thinking DeSantis is, is just becoming more of a, a, a swamp creature when actually they really, really liked him as governor. They really liked him as a politician beforehand. Uh, but, you know, it is surprising that he's not making more headway. I sort of thought that he would. I know. I got to tell you, I've, I've fallen out of, I still respect him, but I've fallen out of love with him, and I don't know why, Chadwick Moore. <laughs> Honestly. I don't, I mean, because I've, I've watched him. He came to Illinois, and it was great, but I, he just needs to hit, you know, go outside of COVID. I think everything's about COVID, and he needs to expand a little bit more on other things. Like, he should brag about the fact that he built the bridge to Sanibel Island, you know, in two weeks rather than two months. And that, you know, I don't know, or his military record, he should talk about that more or something. I don't know exactly what it is. Do you? I, I, I think that's a great way to put it. I don't know exactly what it is either, but I think a lot of people are, are feeling that same way. And I think he, when he, he was the strongest when Trump was kind of launching these attacks at him and he was completely ignoring them. Yes. And I think that's when people were really starting to gravitate towards him. And now that I know you have to, you know, it's politics. You got to go after your opponent, but maybe you didn't have to. And maybe that's why people are um, shying away from him because people really seem to be liking him when he was taking the high road. The, uh, the ad that you're referring to, which was put up by a super PAC and uh, the messaging of the super PAC, even though I have friends there, Ken Cuccinelli, Steve Cortez, the messaging from that pack has been terrible. I, I just yeah. don't know how else to put it. That ad was bizarre in the sense that, OK, you want to uh, remind people that Trump is sort of uh, not moored when it comes to talking about uh, uh, cultural issues or and, and other matters and maybe start to develop that as a theme about, you know, can you trust him? But I don't know if that's really going to work, given the track record and people's uh, Republican primary voters approval of what he did while president. But OK, I can understand that. But then 
it shifted mid ad into like news stories about the DC press corps attacking uh, DeSantis over his stances, his, you know, pro-family stances, effectively. But it was it just was weird. I, I I know you're supposed to do like a bank shot there and understand that these people are attacking him, and I don't like these people. So I'm I appreciate that he stood his ground when he was under attack. That's what you're supposed to take away from it, I presume. But I just don't think it conveys that, or doesn't convey in a way that's particularly persuasive or engaging. And I just find that he hasn't really announced a presidential campaign. He's announced that he has been a very good governor of Florida. And when you're running for president, you have to now represent yourself to the nation and offer your value proposition, offer an answer to the why I'm running question. And I really don't know why he's running. I mean, I, I don't know what his why answer is. I I just it just seems to me they're sort of like groping in the dark. It's COVID to COVID, uh, you know, two weeks ago. And then it's the uh, overreaches from the LGBTQ mafia during Pride Month. And then you're just sort of going from place to place. But there's nothing that ties it all together that says this is who Ron DeSantis is and what he intends to do. And then, you know, he's got the track record that shows he gets things done. I just don't see them putting these pieces together in a way that is linear and thus easy to follow. Yeah, yeah. It seems like, I mean, it seems like that campaign needs a major revaluation and major shakeup. And, and yeah, I always felt that, that, again, I always liked him. I guess I still like him. But, you know, it, he was doing so much better. He was doing so much good for the entire country as governor of Florida because he was leading all the other governors to follow his moves, all the other Republican governors. I mean, he, he, had, he could do way, he was doing way much better for this country as governor than I think he could ever do or anyone could do as president. You know, in Washington, you're roadblocked in so many directions and, um, you know, it, nothing ever gets done. But as governor, you know, he could really change the, 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 the direction of this country in multiple states just by being a leader in Florida. So when he decided he was running for president, my first thought was, like, is this just is this just ego and power driven? Because there's no way you're going to be able to accomplish much as much in the White House as you were as governor. Well, the other thing, too, is I know people will say to Sanders supporters will say, you know, it's still early. We're in the summer doldrums. And that's true. But, uh, you know, Labor Day will be here before you know it. And then you got uh, a three month sprint to uh, the holidays and, uh, and caucuses and primaries right after that. So it's not as much time as you think. And the conversation is either about Trump and his latest pronouncement or his latest indictment, or it's about uh, looking for alternatives to Trump. And you have Glenn Youngkin having to deny he's interested. And you've got Brian Kemp uh, opening the door. to. So, I mean, if, if you've got Brian Kemp in Georgia and Glenn Youngkin in Virginia, and you've got the other candidates that are running too, and more get into the field every, what does that say about their, uh, uh, review of DeSantis and and their backers review of DeSantis, even Tim Scott uh, and, you know, the backing that he gets from Larry Ellison. I mean, it's, you're just dividing up the pie uh, in a lot of different slices right now, perhaps more to come. And that definitely hurts DeSantis. Yeah. And that, that maybe speaks more than anything that all these other there's questioning of all these other uh, popular governors who should jump in because DeSantis is supposed to be the other. He, well, he's supposed to be the alternative to Trump and the one that, that Trump supporters would, would like and, and, and the base would approve of. So the fact that you have all these other um, people wanting to jump in and not just wanting to run for vice president uh, is, uh, you know, probably says more uh, about what's going on with the Sanchez campaign. All right. Before we let you go. Uh, Who did it? Yeah. What's your best guess for whose coke that is in the West Wing? <laughs> Hunter Biden in the library with the plastic straw. Yes. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, I know that's, I, I know that's, you know, the safe bet, but I mean, you know, he, he's a rock man. He's a rock and pipe man. You know what I mean? That's true. Yeah. 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 I know that does, throw, that throws a wrench. Well, you know, there was like that topless transgender person dancing around the lawn. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. sure that there, you know, there might be all number of people were in that, in the white house during pride who enjoy a good party. So there have been drops playing them, I suppose. I just wonder why the, if the White House plans to maybe, like, I don't know, drug test everyone who works there. Wouldn't you want to know if you had someone working there on cocaine? I don't think that they do want to know. I think you uh, could just assume so. they are. 
I mean, well, that, that yeah. pride party got out of control, clearly. Well, and, you know, Biden, they were going to bring dignity back to the White House, and they've done the exact yeah. opposite with that transgender showing her his boobs or whatever, and then the cocaine in the White House. But it was found in an area that is toured by, you know, celebrities, like people that are, are special, if you get a special tour. So could be anybody. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm, that's what my theory was, is that the, the dude with the fake tatas was a misdirection place so they could go in and, uh, do lines yeah. in the West Wing, so they had a story to tell. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's my that's my theory. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that. I agree. <laughs> Chadwick Moore, editor in chief at Outspoken, contributing editor, spectator, role author of the biography on Tucker Carlson entitled Tucker, available in just a couple weeks, July 18th. Pick it up. Chadwick Moore, thanks as always. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And he joined us on our Turnkey dot Pro Answer line. This is the morning show. More Chicago radio listeners are choosing. This is Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer. Hey, everybody. Charlie Kirk here for my friends at Lone Star Transfer. If you felt like booking your timeshare,